Good morning or good evening, depends where you are in the world. It's day nine. I'm trying to reach the rating of 2000 in chess within 30 days. And today, something special is happening. I accidentally invented a new gambit. All right, let's get started. We start with e4, e5. And now we try to respond with the same idea. My opponent is attacking this pawn. I'm counterattacking this one. Now the question is, will they take or not? Why they do not take? Why? Okay, it's all good. Well, we will play... Okay, let's try something funny, okay? We try something funny. Push! We go for the center. I don't know if this is something that actually exists, but we try. This is the Alessia Gambit. Now we push in the center. We're attacking this knight. That's the idea. The Alessia's Gambit. So if this knight goes here... Uh, the knight could be in danger because we are attacking it one more time with the bishop and attacking also this point. Mm hmm That's the big plan. <laughs> there is a problem with this move. <gasps> okay, the knight went there, which is not really too good because this knight doesn't have a way to go back. I mean, there is a way, but this knight, knight here makes sense. I think, you know what? I think I can just take here. I feel I can do that. Because if the knight takes here, I'm taking with the queen, and then I'm attacking this knight. And if the knight takes the pawn, I might go with queen e7, and there are lots of pieces on the e-file. This looks fun. Wow, d4. And now we have the en passant. Now we can take here en passant. But I like how they're playing. They're playing actually very good. Okay, um, we have the ampersand, but we don't have to do the ampersand. We could also just move the bishop out and pin this knight. This also looks good. And maybe be very quick to castle. We could also just take there. I have a great idea. Okay, I will push here. And now, if... My, oh, say, well, push. Push the bishop. Yeah, bring the bishop out. I want to bring the bishop out. And if bishop d2, I'm thinking about the move e3. Just sacrificing the pawn, because after a pawn takes, this diagonal gets weak. Hopefully, I can exploit that. That's just an idea. I could also just, honestly, just trade here, trade the knight, because as soon as my opponent unpins, this pawn is hanging. Uh, so I could just stay there, uh, maybe with the knight, um, sorry, with the bishop, pawn takes, and then just castle. So just go for some safe things. I mean, I'm just too tempted to play this move, honestly. Bing, boom, bam. Boom, ra, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, bam. Okay. It looks fun, but it doesn't look like I will have a good advantage. Okay, we'll play it anyway. No, it looks fun. In the spirit of the gambit, we can then make this diagonal weak, and then we will simply castle. Surprise. We don't, we don't play anything um, too crazy. We just castle, and there is a threat of this check. The check... The threat is still there. Uh, where is this knight going? It's a good question. <laughs> also, rook here. Rook here is a good move. And maybe I will simply take there. And then... Yeah, now I have to stop my opponent from castling. That's my... That's my big plan. Okay, I will take here, I guess. Can I take here? Yeah, I will take here. Let's see what they do. So they have to take with the pawn. That's very smart. Because if not, this pawn would have been hanging. And now I'm thinking about this check. The problem is that after checkpoint here and this, my opponent can try to trade the queens, which is not ideal. Okay, maybe the Alessia Gambit is a big failure. Okay, let's, let's keep believing in it. <laughs> we give away another pawn just because I want this bishop not to take here. Yes, not to being able to take there. And after bishop takes... I can simply... Wow, okay, they took there, but now we have some compensation. Now the queen is act is attacking there. Okay. Now we play this. I'm a bit scared that my opponent might want to trade the queens here. Uh, because that leaves us without without the queens, which is not good. Um, oops, please don't play queen f3. Please don't play queen f3. Uh, is they, are they playing it? Okay, they are thinking. Ooh! Okay, we kept the queen on the boards. That's amazing for us. That's good. So we have to develop. Okay, we'll attack this knight. Get wrecked. 
It's very important that I made this diagonal weak. Remember, pawns are never going backwards. And now, um, that's a good move, but not so good, because after this, so I want to say that I made this diagonal weak, but my opponent has no way to exploit it. And by now you know that, the weakness, that weaknesses are just those that can be exploited. And there is no light square bishop, because for example, a light square bishop there would be deadly. So I'm all right. And now after this knight moves, this pawn is hanging. And now my opponent just left this knight. <laughs> a free cheese macaroni. I love to eat them. Uh, and yeah, I think you also like to eat free cheese macaroni. By the way, we are winning. So the Alessia Gambit is good. Now we take also another pawn. <laughs> we are protecting this one. And we have an extra piece. So how to win quickly? Even when you have an extra piece, you have to bring your pieces out. Because the only way you, you show your opponent you have an extra piece is that if they are active and you can actually use them. If not, you have an extra piece, but you can't do anything with those. Okay, now I'm going to take this pawn. Every time you leave a piece unprotected, be careful about the discovery checks. Uh, for example, here my opponent could move the bishop and give a check. I would lose my queen. So that would be really bad. But that's not the case because this bishop is on the dark square, my king is on the light square. So unless we are playing a blitz game and the incredible move bishop e6 can be played, uh, I'm out of danger. So I'll take here now. We are threatening nothing <laughs> because the checkmate is prevented. Unless my opponent decides to be very kind and to move this queen away. Okay, they are actually protecting one more time. And I need to bring the knight out. So there we go. Okay, they are threatening mate, but I can simply play rook here and protect it. It's so nice that there is no bishop that can go on this diagonal. Because now there are three of my most important pieces. So a bishop here would be a really big, 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 big watermelon. I mean, I don't want to say that watermelon are annoying. I love watermelon. They're very fresh. But yesterday, I went to take an ice cream and it was like, I tried a watermelon and it was not so good. That's why the bishop got called watermelon. <laughs> okay, rook there. Uh, I will now go with the knight here. I'm attacking the queen and this rook is feeling not so comfy. No, no, not so comfy. Not so comfy at all. Uh, you know why? But this queen is... Oh, wait. I nearly removed something very bad. <laughs> So that queen is overloaded because the queen has to protect the rook, but the queen has also to stay in this day in this in this file. Because if not, this bishop is not, not anymore protected because this pawn is no longer pinned. So okay, that's why they sacrificed, but now we can just take here and then bring this rook to the party. Poons, 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 para poons, poons, poons. We bring the rook, poons, poons, poons. And we'll bring the rook here, we'll take on g2 and we'll win the game. Yes, that's what is going to happen, I guess. I have my hair going into my eyes today. I don't know why. Okay, queen here. That's the plan. I want to take there and be fancy. I have fancy trade. So I'm taking there. And after queen takes, I take. And after king takes, ooh, ooh. Okay, now it's even more fancy because... I'm taking and I'm getting, I'm sacrificing a piece in order to get rid of the piece that is pinning my pawn. And now my opponent self forked himself. What is this sign? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I wanted to do this one. Yes, that was <laughs> self fork. And now I take the rook because it's more fun. And I'm hoping for this. That seems like a good move, but it's actually a mistake because now I pin again and I'm winning the bishop. That's amazing. Bang. And. This is falling together, together with my opponent's tears. We take. Now I'll show you how to give mate with two rooks. Maybe my opponent will just resign. Okay, so with one rook we block, right? We're blocking all the squares. Okay, with one rook we block. This is very important. Okay, the, with one rook we block. This is absolutely important. And with the other rook we go. We slide and checkmate. Guys, I think I just invented a new gambit for real. I did some quick analysis and after pawn takes, you can play the move e4. Now this knight has to move one more time. The nice part is that if the knight goes here, you see the queen? The queen is looking at the knight, so you can play the strong move c6. Now, if your opponent is taking, 
you are winning a piece and you're going to be very happy. And if they don't take and they play mm, any, any development move, you can take here next and you have a good center and you're very happy about it. Also, you're going to then just develop all your pieces, castle, you have a stronger center with the black pieces. If the knight goes here, as my opponent did, now I play the move... Uh, what did I play here? I took, I took on d5, but that's not so fun, because I didn't get such an aggressive uh, game position. But I can go with the gamut and play the move c6. After pawn takes, I play bishop here. And now this is like super crazy, because... My opponent could go on with the... is basically a reverse Danish gambit. So I have all my bishop immediately out. And uh, I can go with the attack really quickly. If they go back here, I can simply castle. They try to, they try to develop. I go out. And after the move like castle, they are already in big danger. I can go just all the way back with my, with my bishop, even on b8, and then set up a checkmate. Something like queen c7, uh, knight d4. And if they have to play g3, well, this diagonal is weak forever. So this could be really fun. And for them, it's also hard to play the move d3 because they are just helping me to open up my bishops. I mean, this could be a fun position to play some game with. I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, new game. We have the white pieces this time. Will my opponent play the move e5? I have a few gambits to try if they play the move e5. Okay, so I have played already some king's gambit in the previous day, so I will go with the Danish gambit, which is something that you guys have asked in the comments. Okay, I will play the move c3. I'm just offering, I will just offer all of them. Yes, I will just offer, oh no, my pawn. I have offered like three pawns up to this point, and my opponent took all of them. Now I have two huge bishops that are pointing exactly there where it can hurt. Okay, I will go with the knight here, just because I don't want to trade, um, I don't want to block my, my, my bishop. Okay, now I just take there and I'm already winning. <laughs> yeah, I take here, and there is a rook and the knight under attack. And, uh, did I just win a piece? I guess so. I mean, now I'm just a pawn down, and I won a piece. I should be winning. <laughs> okay, we take this. There we go. And now we can try to exploit the weakness of this square. Okay, let's try not to get mated. There is a rook that is not under attack. Okay, there is a fun move that we can try to do. Uh, we have an extra... Oh, wait. No, no, no. I wanted to play queen f3. With the idea that if queen takes, oh no, my bishop, I give mate in a few moves. But my rook is hanging there. So we'll not play that. And we'll just go back with the bishop here, protecting also this square. And then we are ready to just develop... Bring the knight out, maybe castle. There we go. Okay, there is this check here that is close to win this bishop. So my opponent needs to be really careful. Okay, they took the pawn. That's smart. What do we do here? Okay, I will play a move that will make Hikaru super proud. So we play the Danish Gambit, Bone Cloud Variation. <laughs> the king on e2 is protecting the knight and I'm pinning this one. Now, I'm a little bit scared about the move bishop g4, which is actually quite annoying. Oops. Uh, oops. Okay, this is, like, really bad now. Wait a second. I think the bone cloud variation was really bad. Really a bad move. Oh my god. Okay, I have a plan. I will give a check here. And... <laughs> well, I was considering knight c6. And then after bishop here, bishop takes, I take here, pawn takes... I take here and I'm giving a double check. But this move makes my life easier because I'm taking here and now I can just I can just take back with the knight and life is good. So Danish Gambit Bone Cloud variation is so strong. <laughs> okay, we take here attacking the rook and this pawn at the same time. One eternity later. I froze <laughs> just because you know, I'm scared. I'm afraid of this rook getting there. But now that I think, even if the rook gets there, I can just cover it with the bishop or with the knight. So it shouldn't be a big deal. Yes, it's not a big deal. Yeah, so we'll just take a pawn. And after a rook gives a check, how am I covering? Oh wow, queen gives check. Okay, I'll cover with the knight. Looks fun. 
you know that the knight is actually a, such a great defender of the king because uh, it controls all the square that are surrounding it so it's like very tough to give checks because the king is already controlling the squares around himself and the knight is controlling also other critical squares around so it's like harder to give checks so knight is a good defender of the king okay bone cloud variation accepted but now i play a rook here and this is the end for my opponent because i'm attacking the queen and the rook behind and this really the rook is not even hanging but if my opponent trades pieces they have no chances to come back here i have a plus six a fat plus six which is heavy you know i'm just going to take here and then i give a check i mean i don't have my pieces too powerful well, well let's give a check here and then we'll just play bishop here and after this check we can just cover with the knight it's all good trades are good for us we trade we cover with the knight we are going to take their next tradings are good perfect i remember every time you are up on material you have two strategies to win the game strategy strategy number one it's the easiest you trade everything you go to the end game and you win the end game because it's much easier with fewer pieces to make your extra pieces count. So ideally, you can trade the queens here. You can trade everything. Uh, you can take also a pawn here, uh, and then you promote another one and you win the game. Now I'm just taking this rook. This is a bit desperado because my opponent doesn't even have a check right now. Well, they have a check, but he's here blundering a queen, so not so good. And so I was talking about the first strategy, trade everything and win the end game. The second strategy is as you have so much more pieces, you can start an attack against the king. And your opponent will not have enough pieces to defend, so you can give a quick checkmate. So either you go for a checkmate, a strong attack, or you go for trades and end games. You choose the one you prefer. The first approach is simpler. And my opponent is connected. Three, two, one. <laughs> let's go new game we have the black pieces okay still e4 guys I, I have a gambit ready against the move d4 let's see if we can play it okay will they take finally we have the stuff for gambit this is one of the funniest gambit in my opinion uh for the black pieces because there are lots of tricky ideas now this pawn is hanging how is my opponent going to protect it okay with the knight that's extremely extremely logic now uh, i'm attacking this pawn here and now there are already lots of traps if my opponent could go wrong if they play the move uh, bishop e2 oh d4 oh this is not looking good guys i'm just taking a pawn here this doesn't look good not at all i have a big threat right now i have a very i mean they have, they gave me back the pawn at which what ooh, 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 ooh. Somebody asked me in the comments for the interballistic uh, uh, gambit, whatever. I, I, I searched for it. I was like, what is that? And then I saw that is when you take your bishop, you load it, you take it, and then you throw it all the way to f2. And wow, that was so powerful. And the idea is that after king takes, your queen slides all the way to capture your opponent's queen. And you win the game. New game. Okay, we repeat the... We're at e45, knight there, knight here, counterattacking the pawn. And if they play knight here, we play the Alessius Gambit. <laughs> d5. <laughs> Let's go, guys. And now we push. Where is this knight going? There are two squares that I would consider uh, e5. Oh, queen e2. That's a novelty. That's a new move. That's unexpected. Okay, I'm just going to play... Hmm. I'm thinking about just castling, you know, if I can just castle, like real quick, develop this, for example, bishop here, and then just castle. The only problem is that if I go with the bishop here, my opponent can take, and if I castle, I lose a piece. But then I have this move, uh-huh, and I dare, I take. Okay, this could be still fun. Okay, I, I'll try that. Bishop here, this castle. Yes, I'll try this bishop c5 development is important now if they take i will just castle i don't care i don't care about anything i'll just castle 
And if they take here, I'm going with the rook and I'm attacking the queen and the knight, uh, the queen and the king at the same time. If the knight goes back, I just take it with the rook. And if this knight interferes, I will take here and I'm attacking two knights. The knight can still go back and maybe I will be in big troubles. But I'm confident. I think I can play the simple move knight c6. I'm attacking the knight. And if f4, I know this is like lots of moves, but I need to do this calculation because I'm really sacrificing. I mean, I already sacrificed two pawns and I'm now also giving away a full piece. So, <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't play with too much fire, you know? And once you sacrifice, you have to be kind of sure. But we will analyze this game, so no worries. Okay, they took there with check. I'm just taking and I'm happy because they, I didn't lose a piece. I'm just two pawns down. And for my opponent, it's really hard to develop because now they cannot bring this bishop out uh, and also this other bishop out because they lose this pawn. So they are actually in big trouble. I'm now playing this move and bishop g5 doesn't just lose a pawn here, but it loses also a full piece because after bishop g5, this bishop, okay, bishop e3 is what I played. In this case, I can just take there. By the way, after bishop g5, remember this trick. This is like very common. You can take the defensor of the bishop and you are attacking the queen at the same time. So it's like now you can trade the queens, but you want a piece in between. So you captured uh, a knight and a queen and your opponent just captured a queen. And at the end, they will capture your bishop. You will capture their bishop. And so you want a piece. That's a very common uh, idea. I won lots of games like this. So now I think I can just take there because it's true that my opponent is attacking there, but I'm attacking the rook. And I'm also getting ready to give this check which is like very annoying because how are they going to cover the nice things about gambit is that you give away material in order to go for quick development and that's how you have to play them go fast and furious use the pieces that you have and try to avoid your opponent to develop to castle their king and to go to safety okay now they went back with the queen they are protecting the rook but this looks like trouble okay i think i will just develop or I could also take here. I have different moves. I could also play just rook here. Wait. If I give... Aha. Uh -huh. Boom, boom, bam. Okay, I will play the simple move rook here. This looks like really great. I'm pinning this bishop. This bishop cannot move. And I'm also getting ready for some annoying checks. For example, the check here. Where the king is feeling like... Where am I going to spend my the rest day of my life? And... I don't know, honestly. I think bishop e2 needs to be played. Bishop e2 has to be played now. Like this, the king gets a free way to castle. I mean, they are giving away another pawn, but that's what you have to do sometimes. You just have to give back everything that you have, that you got in order to try to survive. And my opponent is doing a really good job here. Now, can I avoid them to castle? So I have two possibilities. One, I just take here, um, ding, boom, bang. And we have equal material. Second, I try to avoid the king from castling. For example, I could give a check here with the queen or with the bishop. But actually, you know what? I'll give a check first here. So sorry, I didn't. I don't give a check. <laughs> That's not a check. But maybe I can give a check now because if the queen covers, the rook is hanging. If the knight covers, I could take there, and the king has to take because if the queen covers, the takes, I take the rook. So after this. The only remaining move is king f2 or king f1, where my opponent can no longer castle. I mean, this looks fun. I think I'm going to play this. Yes, this check looks fun. I want to avoid my opponent for, from castling, and I'm doing it the right way. Ooh! And I want a rook, and I'm winning the other rook if my opponent moves the king right now. Okay, they resigned. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the Alessia's Gambit. I will keep going, trying to reach 13 under tomorrow. And we'll keep going by playing those gambits. Let's get it done. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you missed, go back to day eight. Bye.